Welcome to the Explore Blog's first podcast, where we discuss aviation in a friendly and casual manner in order for you to learn more about aviation. Today, we will be covering many topics. For example, governments all over the world are bailing out airlines from the COVID-19 financial crisis. Should governments actually bail out airlines or should airlines be able to be able to financially support themselves on their own? Another topic that we will discuss is the fate of the European low-cost carrier Norwegian as it is struggling to stay afloat. Will they survive until June? And then finally, when will the aviation industry return to normal? Here is our first The Explorer Blog Podcast. There's no question about the crippling effect of COVID-19 on the aviation industry. Airlines are losing billions of dollars and are struggling to stay afloat. Many airlines have even collapsed, such as European regional carrier Flybe. Furthermore, airline executives have been forced to lay off employees or even make them work without pay. So about a few weeks ago, the Trump administration implemented a financial aid bill which included 25 billion US dollars being sent to US airlines for payroll assistance. Cargo airlines and aircraft contractors are also receiving aid through this bill, totaling almost $3 billion. So for years, the CEOs of United, Delta, and American Airlines have been clashing against United Arab Emirates carriers, Emirates and Etihad, due to an unfair advantage that they have been receiving. The UAE carriers have been receiving government funding and competing against the big three on high demand routes. Emirates and Etihad utilized over 50 billion US dollars just to lower their prices on these fares, taking passengers from the big three American airlines that don't have the finances to lower their prices and to the extent of their competition. The lawsuit resulted in a halting of Emirates and Etihad's American route network, restricting them from opening routes and applying for fifth freedom place. What the U.S. government is doing due to COVID-19 may be unfair due to the different funds they may be receiving compared to airlines in other parts of the world that may not have access to this type of funding. This in a way creates an unfair competition between the two airlines as one is receiving government help while the other is struggling to stay afloat on their own without financial support. So the question is, should governments be able to bail out airlines and control how much they provide? Or should the amount of funding be regulated by a global institution, such as the United Nations? Hi guys, I'm JV, and so my belief is that governments should be able to bail out airlines for sure, because struggling airlines will definitely need support, and even airlines that have a good financial backing will definitely need support to continue to be able to keep jobs and stuff. I think minimizing job loss is definitely one of the big factors that should drive a specific government to giving bailouts to airlines. I don't think it's for the actual preservation of the airline itself, but more for to make people keep their jobs. And so the economy like still does okay. While I think that governments should be able to bail out airlines, I also think that a, a global organization, whether it be like the UN or like World Trade Organization or something, uh, one of these global types of organizations should be able to regulate the amount of money given to each airline so that a specific airline, for example, Lufthansa, doesn't use all of the money given to it for like personal advantage. Because for example, in an an interview that I was watching the other day with the CEO of Ryanair, he was talking about how Lufthansa is just going to use the $10 billion the German federal government gave them to buy up everybody after the bailout, which is true to some extent because it does provide them with a deeper, like deeper pockets during this time but they also need some of that money. And so that's why I believe that a global organization should be able to regulate the amount of money given. No, I think that there definitely should be bailouts, but obviously under certain circumstances. Like for example, many airlines have engaged in multi-billion dollar stock buybacks. These stock buybacks have decreased their liquidity. And if after this crisis, they had not used these money on stock buybacks, they would have a lot of liquidity and they would be good. But however, now without, they can't really have the liquidity to actually pay and keep their airline functioning. So I think that therefore one regulation should be no stock buybacks. We can all agree on that. And also I think that definitely airlines should pay back their, their loans in full. Obviously they shouldn't be making the government pay wait. And as for like a global scale thing to bill all the airlines, I think that is simply bad. I think that shouldn't have because some of the governments don't have the true money and liquidity to actually fund airlines. You know, like for example, I don't think Mauritius really has enough money to bail out Air Mauritius, so I mean, there's that.
However, I don't think airlines should get government payouts because they're private companies. They don't have really any federal connections or protections. The only way they'd really be connected to the federal government besides paying taxes would be through the FAA. But that's a whole different side of aviation and the airlines and flying. These airlines, since they're private companies, they have investors which provide money. And the government can't really discuss a U.S. airline in this case. The U.S. government cannot really afford to pay airlines as they're uh, in debt. And right now, everything going on, it'll make them, it'll just put them even deeper in debt. And since these airlines are private companies, the government shouldn't focus on them. They, they need to really focus focus on the citizens and spend towards finding a cure and protections for citizens, which airlines need to provide their own uh, benefits for workers that are still employed with them. So no, I don't think airlines should get anything from the government unless it's a state-run airline. These are private companies and they're very wealthy companies that need to provide for themselves. So I don't think that airlines should be allowed to like put governments at hostage jobs. Because once they collapse, basically millions of jobs just go under. So I think that there's basically no reason for an airline to be just responsible anymore when you're basically going to get bailed out for any reason, any large company. I agree with uh, Winston's a little bit more. Because, you know, I, I guess with Kyle, what you said, I guess a bunch of airlines will just collapse and maybe they'll restructure or whatever and more airlines will come back. But still, that means a fair amount of people are still going to lose their jobs. And that can like contribute in a negative way to the economy. So it's in governments and the world's overall like best interests to keep these airlines running. And then like maybe, I don't know, maybe like restructure them so they're better suit to battle a pandemic or whatever attack on aviation may happen so that they can be better airlines themselves. But they should get money like in the short term so that they will be able to stay alive and continue to function and then restructure for the long term. Well, these, these airlines, I get what you're saying. It's good to help them stay afloat so people don't lose their jobs. But these airlines are incredibly wealthy. And if an airline is collapsing, it's going to be a very small airline. So I don't know, like the government really can't be spending too much money unless they already have a budget or um, a fund set aside for these airlines. Then I don't think these airlines can be that much of the government's focus. But like the government has extra money and extra resources for these airlines. And I think definitely give it to them. But uh, these airlines can't be really the government's main focus. I think that considering the 26 million jobless claims, I think that airlines can basically convince the government to give the money at this point because there are many companies that are collapsing in many respective industries. So I think that definitely A should be given to mainly just keep jobs, obviously under circumstances and regulations and all that good stuff. Well, in that case, shouldn't the government give it to every single company or every single business or industry? Well, well, that isn't what we're discussing. I mean, we're just discussing mainly the impacts on the aviation industry, not just all the industries, sir. Like some industries deserve less bailouts. I think for the aviation industry, they're one of the hardest hits. They should definitely get more bailouts, I'd say. At least more money. I agree with both of you guys. Like Winston, I see your point on the, like the job list stuff, like those people. But I also, I kind of understand what Kyle is saying. So you know how... Um, after Thomas Cook's collapse, the government was able to charter a bunch of jets to repatriate all like the stranded English vacationers from like Palma de Mallorca and, and other places around Europe and also even like Miami and stuff. I think it would be logical to create an organization like that, but to help airlines in case of a pandemic or a disaster. That whole government initiative that helps repatriate all the people that were affected by the Thomas Cook collapse. Like it happens as a result of like tax payments because the airlines, they pay an insurance every year, like a small amount of money, I think, to the government so that in case something like this happens, like Thomas Cook's collapse, the government will be able to successfully re repatriate everybody without too much cost. And so I think something like that would be useful, but not to repatriate people after an airline dies, essentially, but to keep the airlines going strong still, even during a pandemic or something. Well, I mean, right now, I don't think this is needed because due to like the low demand in the aviation industry, like if you look at basically every single airport, demand has fallen off a cliff. So, but I mean, for like future, I'd say yes, past the coronavirus pandemic. I think if that thing like World Aviation Group, then I don't think it can be government related or 
government funding. I think it would have to be a, like private investors since yeah. everyone's once again are private companies that have to be private investors too. I have to agree with Kyle. There's there's no real reason to add government involvement into more private based companies. If it was a state run airline like South African or anything else, I'd say yes. But earn that. And but I mean instant. yeah. Did you, did you just say there's no need to add government involvement in these private companies? So I was using that analogy for like Thomas Cook. Like the British government used that to repatriate like people after Thomas Cook went bankrupt or like collapsed. But like I, what I'm saying is what if airlines paid a tax to the government, which the government could use as a deposit to those airlines to essentially like apportion money to them in times of a crisis. But you know what? I think I my point is like going off track now because... It makes sense for the airlines to just keep that money and not do anything with it rather than give it to the government for the government to just give it back to them like a portion so they might get less than what they actually give. I don't know. So what you're saying is like send or the airlines send the government a certain percentage of whatever they make to set aside as like an emergency fund. So like yeah, the government that, kind of acts like a bank. Yeah, that that's what I was originally saying, but I don't know. That's hey, that's an interesting it. concept, but I don't think it would necessarily work because, I mean, the government doesn't... Yeah, they have other priorities. Well, I mean, I'd say that rather the airline should be trusted to bail out themselves, not the government. Yeah, because they should exactly. be able, to, yeah, they yeah, should be able exactly. to have their own capital to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It, so, like, so, why... So, so, you're saying, you just said airlines should be able to bail yeah, out themselves. Yeah, airlines should be able means, to bail out themselves. Which you're just saying they don't need not, to not like Not, like, give out money to the government and expect the government to pay. Yeah, out because it. I guess in like that Like, social sense, security. Yeah, in that sense, they're essentially using the government as a bank, I guess. Because, I mean, in that case, it would be like, we are going to do something bad with it. So why don't you just hold on to it? And then when we're in trouble, you take it back. If, if you're is, an airline, you have to be financially responsible enough to actually take care of your money. So therefore, yeah, I think so. it's pointless for them to actually give their money to the government. Yeah, and I think I agree on stuff like that. For example, where it's so badly run, like South African, for example, so many people are going to lose their jobs or already like have lost their jobs because of that whole scandal. Um, what do you guys think about that? Where do airlines like that or government run airlines stand Wait. in this issue? Well, I think that's a special case because I think it, it mainly deteriorated over like the course of many years, like about like 10 years. So, so I'd say they're just in charge of making sure that they survive. Well, the governments are the one giving them liquidity anyway, so I'd say that if anything, it's mainly the government's choice for that, yeah, where to bail them out or not. Like, so for example, still, you could pull yeah. a South Africa and create a new airline, which is what I think they're currently trying to do. Yeah, I think they're going to do that to preserve them. Or at least what the unions want to do. Yeah, they want to preserve Yeah, the drugs. government wants, wants to satisfy all the unions so that not, everybody's not mad, I think. I guess final conclusion is private airlines such as United, American, Lufthansa should be in charge of bailing themselves out and should not need to rely on government assistance. For state-run airlines, it's up to the government for whether or not they survive. Is that, yeah, I, I, I is agree that with that. General? That makes sense. I would agree with that, yeah. Thank you for the insightful discussion by JV, Kyle, and me. Now, let's switch over to the next topic. The Norwegian is struggling to stay afloat. However, how long can they stay afloat? Will they survive past May? With this, we go to our coverage by Tejas. I'm Tejas, uh, or DTX Jets, and I'll just tell you about Norwegian Air. Right now, what we know is that Norwegian Air plans to ground the majority of its fleet until April of the year 2021. Norwegian is Europe's third largest low-cost carrier, and it did state that it will keep most of its flights grounded until April of next year. Now, I did read an article that was from The Guardian, and Norwegian is continuing to persuade its shareholders to accept a rescue plan that's backed by the government that will wipe out most of their investments. Now, the airline is asking its investors to provide a lifeline before the airline runs out of finances in mid-May. So basically what that means is they're just asking a last-minute lifeline, and the airline predicts that it will run out of cash in the middle of this month. So as of today, about 95% of Norwegian's fleet is still grounded. The airline stated that it doesn't expect to resume its long-haul international services until after the summer of 2021. Also, despite the airline plans to gradually restart its short-haul and long-haul flights next year, they believe that they won't be able to return to their normal operations until January of 2022. And the airline did do a presentation about their plans, and they did say that they do plan to focus on the most top-tier destinations when they do uh, restart their flights. Those destinations can include New York, JFK, 
London, Gatwick, and Los Angeles. Now, the airline continues to seek a loan from the Norwegian government that is worth approximately 2.7 billion Norwegian crowns or 270 million U.S. dollars. The airline's Swedish and Danish subsidiaries filed for bankruptcy just last week. Unfortunately, Norwegian is just one of the many carriers that are being heavily affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Although the extent of the damage caused by the virus varies between the airlines, the economic impact caused as a result of the pandemic will continue to make it difficult for all airlines to stay afloat. Just last week, uh, we did report that Air Mauritius and Virgin Australia entered voluntary administration. You can check out that article on our website. Now we have Kyle Jonas and he will talk about when AB Sim will go back to normal. I'm Kyle, also known as Midwest Aviation. Obviously, COVID-19 has had a large impact on the whole world. The aviation industry is not exempt from that. So the aviation industry is declining due to the loss of travelers, which has led to airlines having to cut routes, pilots having to been forced to go in for a boat, airlines collapsing, aircraft being grounded and even retired, airport and airline staff being laid off, and several other ill effects. Airlines need government assistance, which is difficult to obtain. Some governments do not want to give airlines that monetary assistance, which was previously discussed. Many aircraft are being rapidly retired, which may lead to a shortage of aircraft and flying becomes normal again. For example, Delta recently announced that they will retire all their MD-80s and 90s in the coming months, and American Airlines has sped up the retirement of their 757s and 767s. Aviation will take several years to recover from this pandemic. However, aviation and technology in general may change immensely, leaving some airlines in the dust if they cannot catch up to the changes of the technological world and new, more efficient aircraft. It will be years before flying is remotely close to what it was before COVID-19, and this is just the beginning. These airlines collapsing, there will be many more go bankrupt and who go under. Routes will be cut, and it's going to continue to go downhill before we see any signs of recovery from aviation. Thank you, Kyle Jonas, for that insightful response. Next, we have the top 10 airports for plane spotting category with Kyle and Daniel. Hi, again, I'm here with Daniel. Hello. And we'll be discussing the top 10 airports in America for plane spotting. These are based on general opinion, and these airports do not have official spotting areas because obviously those are going to be better for spotting. So the first airport on the list is San Francisco International Airport, or SFO. Many spots are easily accessible from the terminal, and they have many spotting locations. They have garages that offer a very close and unobstructed view of the aircraft. The lighting is easily adaptable, and they have a large airline variety, including many flights from Asia. And they also have a large variety in uh, different aircraft. Number two is Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. So it's located in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. The planes come really low over Gravely Point Park. The lighting is very good, and there are lots of biking and walking paths that make this spot easily accessible from the terminal. The airport mostly has regional aircraft, and the largest aircraft that flies in usually is a Boeing 757. The next airport on the list is Los Angeles International Airport, LAX. This is one of the most well-known airports, not only in America, but also the world. It has many, many spots, including Imperial Hill and in and out their aircraft of all sizes, ranging from general aviation to the A380, the largest passenger aircraft in the world. Their airlines come from every continent, so there's a large variety of airlines. Many celebrities fly private jets in and out of LA due to being in LA and Hollywood. Next up is Houston George Bush Intercontinental Airport. This is located in Houston, Texas. The spots are easily connected by an underground air tram, and almost all the spots are very easily accessible from the airport terminal. It's a hub for United Airlines, and there's a large airline variety. Next up, JFK John F. Kennedy International Airport. It's an incredibly large airport, and it has several spots, including its well-known TWA Hotel, which is a Transworld airline theme hotel on the roof of it there's a pool and a bar lounge area that looks right over the airfield and provides a very nice view of the airfield however if you're not staying at the hotel you must pay 
believe it's pretty expensive if you're not staying there. There are parks nearby that have good views of the arrivals and departures. It has a lot of Asian and European airlines, as well as Middle Eastern and African airlines, and many unique airlines where airlines fly to JFK. Some having JFK as their only U.S. destination. Next up on the list is Miami International Airport. Their main spotting location is a grassy area that's right next to the runway. You could also spot at their parking garage. They have a large variety of airlines and a majority of those airlines are South American. And uh, being in lower Florida means that it's a huge gateway for those South American airlines. Next is Daniel Kate Nui International Airport. We'll just call it uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. He, their spots very close to view aircraft and spots are easily accessible with good lighting. There's a wide airline variety, including the Hanu A380, which is well known for its very, very popular aircraft to spot. Next up is Austin Logan International Airport, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. They have multiple parking garages, which has a very good view of the aircraft. And they also have nearby spots near the city. Also, planes fly right over the city. So if you're in the city of Boston, you're able to take pictures of the planes. There's also lots of good scenery that you can get in your pictures from spotting at Boston. The parking garages are pretty high over the airport, meaning that you can see almost all the operations just from one location. Next up is Las Vegas McCarran Airport, LAS. Las Vegas is a new interesting location because it's right next to the Las Vegas Strip and in incredibly close proximity to the city. And because of this, there are many hotels that overlook the airport, so it's easy to get a good vantage point from staying in one of those hotels. And additionally, you can just spot through the fence and it provides a very good scenery for the background of your pictures, especially departures it provides good scenery in the background of your pictures. And then last up on our list is Chicago Midway Airport, which is located in Chicago, Illinois. It is surrounded by sidewalks and it's in a residential and commercial area. There are lots of restaurants across the street and you can stand outside and spot while waiting for food or your table. And then there are two garages that are overlooking the airfield. So in makes it much easier to spot than many of the other airports in the United States. Those are our top 10 spotting airports in the U.S. Thanks for listening to our first podcast. Be sure to check out our website, theexplorebug.com. We regularly publish high-quality aviation news and share aviation photography. As always, see you in the next podcast. Peace out, and make sure to share our podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.